Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com How to make a hand peened cleaver knife Now basically we're going to uh, create a knife that has a hand forged a uh, hammer peened look and we're going to do this with the stock removal method It's actually a very easy project and it comes out with a pretty dynamic looking knife Now this project is going to start with a uh, knife blank. I have these in stock. They're available at DIYEasyCrafts.com. Uh, they were all cut out uh, using a water jet company. Uh, they were all cut out of uh, 1095 high carbon steel, the 3 thick. This is a nice meaty uh, blade. Got a decent amount of weight to it. And that even the even the um, holes for the scales uh, are pre-drilled or cut out with the water jet. Uh, the water jet company is Long Island Water Jet out in Bohemia, Long Island, New York. Uh, but if you only want one or two, I certainly have them in stock. Anyway, right from the blank, I basically just I went to my friend's shop and using his uh, power hammer and a ball peen hammer. I uh, just started to make impressions onto each side of the blade. I'm just going to basically pound this. Now you could do it if you don't have a power hammer, and uh, most people don't. You could heat up the blade and then just hit it with a ball peen hammer. Either way, you're going to create uh, these little dents on each side of the blade. And the whole theory here, or the whole principle that we're going to try to work towards is we're going to create the peening or the texture on the blade uh, then we're going to do the rough grinding on the blade, and then we're going to send it out for heat treating. And hopefully the heat treating will, will give us that real dark uh, look in each, in each one of those uh, dents created by the uh, ball peen hammer. So anyway, after the, the hand peening is done, or hammer peening is done, um, I basically just clamped the blade into uh, my bevel jig, which is the piece of angle iron with a threaded hole on it for a bolt that sets the angle um, of the grind. And I'm going to do all the rough grinding uh, before heat treating. Uh, once you heat treat these blades, they're very, very hard and it, it takes quite a bit to, uh, to grind them into shape or, or to do the bevels. But before you, you harden it, it's very easy to do those bevels. You know, basically, you're going to grind the bevel on both sides. I'm using a number, uh, an 80 grit paper. I wanted the, I didn't want to use a real polished um, uh, paper on the grind lines or on the bevel lines. I wanted the whole knife to be kind of uh, rough and rustic looking. So I'm basically going to flip the blade over at this point, uh, reclamp it into that jig so that I can uh, grind the bevel on the other side. What's really nice about these cleavers is that you don't have a plunge cut. So they're a very easy knife to work uh, to work on. Uh, you can do it even on a four-inch belt sander from Home Depot. And I'm uh, basically I marked the center line of the blade, and I'm just grinding both sides towards that center line. You do want to leave a little bit of meat on the blade. I'm going to finish grinding after it's heat treated. If you make it too thin, you always uh, stand the chance of it uh, being damaged during heat treating or bending or warping. Uh, but anyway, this is the finished uh, bevels on the rough cut. And you can see how the bevel goes right up into that hand peened area. I went back to my friend Jason Northgard's shop. Uh, he threw it into his coal forge. Um, we're going to heat this up until it's cherry red, uh, non-magnetic. Uh, and once it's cherry red, uh, we're going to take it out of that uh, forge and throw it in some, some oil to quench it. It just takes a few minutes to heat up. And you really want to keep it at that cherry red for a few minutes. Throw it in some oil and let that cool in the oil. Now after um, the heat treating is done, I will take that blade and throw it into a um, 
a regular home oven 375 for about three hours and then I let it cool inside the oven without opening the door it's called tempering uh, the hardening makes it hard the tempering makes it less brittle this is the knife after hardening and after tempering um, you can see the blade is exactly the way I wanted it it's all hammered hand hammered or hand peened and uh, very dark from the carbonization the final steps on the blade work is to then go back into that same uh, bevel jig. I have not adjusted the angle on it, and I'm gonna go back to the belt sander and I'm gonna repolish uh, the bevels, or I'm gonna take those bevels down, you know, as close as I want them to the finished edge. So we're gonna end up with a very rustic uh, blade texture, uh, but the bevels themselves will be shiny which makes for a nice contrast. Now remember, any grinding that you're doing after the hardening, you really want to control the temperature of that blade. Uh, so you certainly want to dunk it in water uh, after every pass uh, on, the, on the belt sander. The belt sander creates a lot of heat very quickly. You certainly don't want to ruin your heat treating. And at this point, if you wanted a more polished look on the bevels, you could certainly change, you know, instead of using an 80, use a finer grit paper. It all depends on, on how you want the finished product to come out. All right, so now the bevels are polished on both sides. I'm going to start working on the, uh, the scales. This is a piece of uh, scrap brass that my nephew, uh, Dennis Lee, gave me. He actually gave me a few of these things. Um, and I'm going to use these for the guards. They're a little bit thick. What I did was I, I just measured uh, the thickness of the scales that I wanted and I'm just going to use a, uh, a disc grinder or an angle grinder with a flap sanding wheel uh, just to really to mill down the surface of that brass and then I'll start you know working it into the shape cutting it to the right size and the disc grinder makes quick work makes quick work of it I think that was a 36 grit flap sanding wheel. Um, once these guards are drilled and pinned into position, this is just roughly pinned, there's no, no glue, I draw the basic shape that I want and then I can um, use the belt sander uh, to start to grind that brass in towards the finished uh, outline of the knife. I don't go right to size now, I leave them a little bit oversized until they are um, actually uh, pinned and glued into position but I do take them down to the rough shape. I'm also, in order to do that, um, that curve on the front of these brass guards, I'm gonna go back to that flap sanding wheel. And again, that makes pretty quick work of it. You could also use a Dremel grinder for some of the finer work. So these guards or bolsters are actually attached to the blade with a two-part epoxy and I used uh, 1 8 diameter brass pins. Everything's glued, everything's pinned and then you, um, I put this in a vise with a couple of clamps and I let it dry overnight until, until that glue is completely cured. And once that glue, that epoxy is cured and you take it out of the clamps, you can just trim off the excess uh, length on the pins in a, on a belt sander, uh, go back to the, I'm sorry, <laughs> you cut off the excess pins on a, uh, on a saw, belt saw, and then go to the belt sander to just grind them down uh, smooth with each one of those, uh, with, uh, the surfaces of the brass. 
and then we move on to the scales. Now for the scales on this knife, I'm just going to use walnut. I did laminate a couple of pieces of a black uh, construction paper using fiberglass resin uh, right onto the back of the walnut. Um, I did that. The black construction paper becomes kind of like a micarta liner. Um, it's going to give a nice color differentiation uh, between the blade uh, and that walnut. Now the scales are attached uh, just like the brass was. I use a two-part epoxy. Uh, in this case, I did uh, mix a little bit of black paint, a few drops of black paint in with that um, epoxy. And then I'm going to pin these together with quarter-inch uh, brass pins. Um, again, clamp it all together in a vise um, with some additional clamps just to make sure that it's all secure. And then I let that you know, sit in the clamps and, until that two-part epoxy is completely cured, usually overnight. I always find it better to attach the bolsters, you know, the brass guards or the brass uh, bolsters before I attach the scales. It just works out better for me. I don't know how everybody else does it, but um, anyway, after uh, the scales are attached and the, and the glue is dried, um, I can use that same disc grinder, that same flap sanding wheel to bring it down uh, to the rough shape. Uh, you can go back to the belt sander. Um, you can use, you know, handheld sander. You can use handheld uh, paper. Um, to bring everything down to the rough shape. I actually like to use a, a, a Dremel grinder with one of those um, drum sanding wheels to do a lot of the finishing work uh, on the scales themselves. And you can just keep rounding over the edges, um, you know, fitting, fitting the handles uh, to your hand, making, making sure that it feels nice. You know, if it's, it's too thick in one particular spot, you can always whittle it down a little bit. Uh, here's some images of the finished product. So you've got a, a hand peened or hammer peened, a very rough textured blade with brass bolsters, walnut scales. I actually did a little bit of um, spine etching. I etched a um, kind of a barbed wire look uh, onto the spine. I covered etching on a separate video. A very simple process. And overall, a very unique uh, cleaver. Please check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. Be sure to check out our other how-to videos. And if you like this video, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel.